All right, here we go for part two. We know that eight gallons of gas for my 650 mile road trip, eight gallons of gas gets us 210 miles. How much more gas is needed? Hmm, well, let's see. If I draw a linear model to help me understand that, I think that'd be a good idea. So I know I have a 650 mile trip. I think I'll put that right, yeah, 650 up here. Okay, gallons of gas, I don't know. But I do know that when I went 210 miles, that's 210 miles, I used eight gallons. The question is, I have this many miles to go, miles, and I have know how much gas I need to use. That's the question, how much more gas is needed? Well, right here, do I know the number that's here? Because that's the one I'm looking for. Well, I know that it's 650 minus 210. 650 divided minus 210. I just want to make sure I do this right. I'm going to take my time. That's 440 miles, it looks like. Yep, 440 miles to go. All right, so this is really a proportional relationship. I can go 210 miles with eight gallons of gas and set that equal to 440 miles would need how many gallons of gas? I'm going to call that X gas. Hmm. Sounds like a, sounds like a, uh, something you take so you don't have gas. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Oh, it's called gas X, isn't it? Have you heard commercials about that? All right, so how do I make this, uh, what do I do? Well, I can find a multiplier. I can multiply by two on both top and bottom. That would give me 420. That's not quite 440. Multiply by two, two point something would give me 440. I could try to figure that out. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to just choose to use cross pro products, cross multiplication. I'll use 210X equals eight times 440. All I have to do now is divide by 210. And that will give me my solution. Let's see, eight times 440 divided by 210. That is 16, 16.76, one nine gallons of, uh, of gas. We're just going to round, I think. Usually, we, if you want to round, just round to the nearest hundreds place. That would be that place right there. In this case, this number stays the same because the one right after it is less than five. So we will have 16.76 gallons of gas. Okay, there is number seven. Now for number eight, I already kind of drew a model for this because I thought I'd take a little while to do that. So here's number eight. Two miles to the beach. So we know from home to the beach is there's two miles. We know the first trip, it took 15 minutes. And the second trip on the way home was six miles per hour. How many minutes less to the beach? Well, we know this was 15 minutes to the beach. And this might be more. I don't know. Let's see. If I could do rate times time equals distance for this part, that should help me. Rate times time equals distance. That's the formula you need to remember. Rate times time equals distance. If you can see the top line there. Um, rate, rate, rate. Well, I guess that'd be six miles per hour. The time, hmm, we don't know the time. The distance is two miles. Oh, that's pretty easy. Six times t equals two. I think I'm just going to divide both sides by six. So t equals one third. Does that mean t equals one third of a minute? Hmm. What does that mean? Well, this is miles per hour. This is an hour. This is an unit rate of hours. This is one third of an hour. One third of an hour is how many minutes? Hmm. 
one third times 60 minutes equals 20 minutes, 20 minutes, okay, 20 minutes. So how much, how many minutes less to the beach than from the beach? Well, this is 60 minutes right here. Not 60, 20, 20 minutes, what am I doing? 20 minutes, six miles per hour means that's 20 minutes from the beach at six miles per hour. That means this person must have gone faster on the way to the beach. Mm -hmm, they sure did. Well, let's see, the difference there is five. So how many minutes less to the beach? It'll be 20 minus 15, which equals five minutes less. There you go. All right, number seven, nope, number nine. Which is more, 40% of 200 or 60% of 130, and why? How do you get that? Well, we know 40% of 200 is simply this, 40 or 0. 0.4 times 200. And this other one, 60%, 0. 0.6 of 130. Which one's greater? I'm gonna put a box here. We have to determine which one is greater, which one is less than. Hmm. Point 0.4 times 200 is 80, and point 0.6 times 130 is 78. See, they're really close. So which one's greater? This one's greater. Why, why is it greater? Well, because I, I uh, use my understanding of percent of each number and figured out each part. That's what I'm going to say. There we go. Looks pretty good and pretty standard to me. I figured out what each part is worth by using percentage. That's number nine. Let's go to number ten. Okay, hold on to your hats. We're going to try to do this as quickly as we can. 35% of the classes are sixth graders. 49 sixth grade classrooms. How many classrooms are total? Mm -hmm. Well, I know that if I have 35%, of the total classrooms equals 49. This is 35% of all the classrooms is 49. I simply am going to multiply both sides by 100 over 35. 100 over 35. So I have 4900 divided by 35. That is 140 classrooms. Okay, this is my percent, but in this case it's a fraction, over 100. Gee, I did that whole problem without even putting the book in the right place. I'm so sorry. So anyway, percent over 100 times the total is the part. Well, instead of percentage, it's just going to be, oh yeah, it's, we're making it into a fraction here. Percent times the total. It asks us, 49 sixth grade classrooms, how many classrooms total? There we go. Percent times the whole or times the total is the part. 35% is the part recognizes 49. When I do that math and set it up that way, I get 140 rooms. For these next problems, number 11, A, B, and 12, A, B, these are proportional, proportion word problems, or proportion problems, period. We have a ratio of 4.2 over 3.6, equals x over this. We simply cross multiply, cross multiply, and solve. I get 4.2 times 20.88 equals 3.6 times x. 3.6 times x. I'm going to divide both sides by 3.6. And that's why I'm letting you use a calculator on the test. You could figure that out by yourself without a calculator, but why? 
I'm not even using calculator. Divide it by 3.6. That is going to be 24. X equals 24.36. What's nice is it works out to that. That's what it is exactly. 24.36. This next one is done the same way. Just watch. 11.5 times Y equals 5 times 30.6. I'm going to divide both sides by 11.5. It comes out really nice. Okay, this will be 1y equals 13.3043. So if I round to the nearest hundredth, it's 13.30, not 31. This number has to be 5 or greater to make that a 1. Now here's something a little different. This one actually has a variable plus a number. How does that work? Let's see what happens. Okay, let's see what happens here. Well, I know I can multiply cross products. I have 2 times 9 equals 3 times this. So is it 3x plus 1 like this? Or is it 3 times the whole quantity x plus 1? It's this, trust me, it's that. And so we have to take the three and multiply everything within there, that one and that one, we have to multiply by the three. This side will give me 18 equals three X plus three. Hmm. Well, I guess I'll subtract three from each side so that I can get the terms with the X on one side and the constants on the other. This will become 15 equals 3x, because this is a giant zero, it's a zero. Now I'm going to divide both sides by three, and that gives me what? Oh, this is a giant one. Oh, 15 divided by three is five. X equals five, there's your solution. There's number 12a, number 12b. Here we are, we have the same thing. We're gonna multiply these together. 7 times 18 equals 9 times this other part here. That gives me 2y minus 4. So 9 times 2y minus 4. Let's see, 7 times 18 is 126. That's set equal to the 9 times the 2y is 18y. The 9 times the 4 is 36. Am I adding or subtracting here? Yep, I'm going to subtract. Good job. Now I have to add 36 to both sides to get the variable term on one side and these numbers to drop out and become a zero pair. That means I have to add 36 here as well. Okay, that becomes a zero. I get 18y equals... Six, 162. So 162 divided by 18 that gives me 9. Y equals 9. Isn't that nice? A nice round whole number. Nice round number. All right, let's look at number 13. We have n divided by 6 equals 18. Now let's think about this for a moment. A number divided by 6 is 18. Would 3 divided by 6 give me 18? Or 12? Or 24 divided by 6 give me 18? The only one left is 108. Okay. If you wanted to really walk, uh, write this out as a problem, I would, I would write it this way. Since I'm dividing this by 6, I can go ahead and multiply both sides by 6. This becomes a giant 1. 18 times 6 is 108. That's number 13. Okay, I'm going to stop there, and we'll go to a third video in just a moment.